when I was four years old, we used to live on uh, Ferry Road at Portage Avenue, and my mom used to go down to Eaton's quite a bit. And so this one day, she said, we're going to Eaton's to shop. Now she says, if you're a good boy, she says, and don't cause any trouble when we're shopping in Eaton's, I'll take you to Woolworth's store, which was the next store to Eaton's, and she says, I'll buy you a toy. So uh, I said, okay. So I kept up my part of the bargain in Eaton's. I didn't do anything wrong. And then she, we went over to the, uh, Woolworth's, and in those days they called it the five and ten, mostly, because you could, if you had a nickel or a dime, you could buy hundreds of things there, and if you had a quarter, you could buy about half the things in the store. <laughs> and uh, they, uh, you know, and then, just, just to show you how uh, inflation has gone up, uh, as I said, you could buy hundreds of things for a quarter. I was in uh, Dollarama the other day getting a pack of razor blades, and you know they had some of the stuff priced up to three dollars. So, uh, that, you know, how can you live with the prices go up that high? But I guess you have to do it. So, uh, anyway, uh, we, uh, when we got to Woolworths, I saw this little tractor about this long, and I wanted it, so it was ten cents. So Mom bought it for me, and I cuddled this little tractor all the way home in the streetcar, and I thought, hey, I'd made it, negotiated a pretty good deal, and I wasn't even a union member yet. <laughs> but I was, uh, I, did, I did become a union member uh, in 1954 when I started with Transit, and uh, I, so far I've been a union member for 63 years with the uh, Transit, Amalgamated Transit. So uh, anyway, uh, uh, we were, uh, my dad, was working as a manager in the Safeway store. The Safeway at that time started in 1929-1930, and they just had small stores, uh, maybe 30 feet wide by 100 feet deep, and there was only five of the staff, the butcher, the store manager, and three stock clerks. That's, that was the whole show. And uh, so he was running the, as a manager. He'd been a salesman for Wakefield Oil over in the old country when they had motorcycle races and sports cars and stuff. So uh, he knew quite a bit about sales. So uh, after about two years, in the spring of 1933, when the dirty 30s, uh, the boss came in one day and he says, uh, uh, how are things going, Mr. Dehara? And, and Dad says, well, not too bad. Yes, he says, I was checking your stores. The stores, he says, you're in the top third of the, for business, he says. And he says, that's not an easy thing to do. But he said, uh, I tell you, he says, you're a married man, aren't you? And Dad says, yes. He says, you have a family? And Dad says, yes. So he says, well, he says, unfortunately, he says, uh, we can pay a single man lower wages than a married man to be manager. So he said, here's your two weeks notice. So this was after my dad had been manager for about two or two and a half years. So he pounded the streets for about three weeks trying to find anything, 40 cents an hour for labor or something. Couldn't find a thing and there was no unemployment insurance. There was no uh, uh, hampers, there was no welfare. You had to get somewhere because they didn't want you sitting around in the city. There was, uh, so anyway, a friend told him about uh, the government had a whole bunch of vacant land in Manitoba, Crown land, and they would like to, people to go out and rent it and pay a tax on it, bring them in some money. So dad went to see them and they gave him a uh, list of three or four places to look at. Luckily, we had a, still had a car then. And um, we went out there. I was only four and a half, but I'm going from what they told me in later years. And uh, we looked at a few places, and we finally found this this one place. Uh, it was a mile and a quarter from the village. And I was going to be going to school in the next year and a half, so I didn't want to go be too far from school. So this had two churches. and. Um, a hall, a double hall, and uh, uh, a blacksmith shop, and a station, and uh, one, about ten families lived there. And there was a radius, a three-mile radius of the village, and there's 35 farms in that three-mile radius, and only two farmers had a car. So uh, times were tough. So anyway, uh, we uh, settled on this one place, and uh, it was you know, not too bad. It had a house and a barn and a couple other buildings on. So uh, I started school there when I was six, and uh, I guess that would be 1935, I think. And uh, we, uh, uh, it was a one-room school with one teacher, taught all the grades, 
and we took grade nine and 10 by correspondence. Your schoolwork all was mailed out from Winnipeg and you did the work and mailed it back, on, like the teacher mailed it back on the Friday and another batch would come out the next week they, and you, they, you do it, did all the work on it, send it back, they would mark it in Winnipeg and you know, and you know, it was kind of different, but there was only one other person in my grade so at one thing you could brag that you never came worse than second in your class, and sometimes you even came first. So, so that was a bit of a bonus. 